All right, what's going on, Hot Squad? Welcome back to my Heartbreaker Recap Marathon. So we're going to check out another cast recap. That's right, this is actually his recent one. This is his Black Panther Wakanda Forever recap. And this one's called, How Namor Pulled to Wakanda and Forced Shuri to Become Queen. So I've seen Wakanda Forever. I thought it was pretty good. I thought Wakanda's pretty good. Very sad, man. Very sad to begin, man, you know. You know, seeing, you know, how they killed off T'Challa. And, you know, of course, Chadwick Boseman passed away about four years ago. It, it feels crazy. Four years ago, Chadwick Boseman passed away. It feels crazy, man. It's Tom flies, Tom flies, man. Tom freaking flies, but it's so incredibly sad, man, because he plays such a great Black Panther. So, at the Wakanda Forever, I don't know how in the world they're going to, Ryan Cougar's going to do this. I don't really know how, who's going, really going to be, like, filling up his shoes. I know they got a young T'Challa. Yeah, overall, I'm very excited to see his recap. I know it's going to be hilarious, and it's going to be quite quite bittersweet. I got to admit, quite bittersweet. So, I'll squad for you to do. We're going to check out Casper's Black Panther Wakanda Forever recap right now. Let's check it out. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. So we start off after the events of T'Challa's death. Even in the afterlife, Killmonger remains the biggest threat because he brought all the heart-shaped herbs. T'Challa couldn't be cured of his sickness. A real firm believer in that Mamba mentality. Yep. If I'm dying, you come in with me. <laughs> and because after the events of Black Panther, T'Challa gave the rest of the world a taste of what that vibranium was like. And it was like... Spectacular, give me 14 of them, man. <laughs> so kind of like Mr. Krabs with that secret formula. They not giving up their resources to anybody. So the government puts their two brain cells together and decides Let's just take that shit. Yeah, stupid. But yeah, um, that didn't work out for them so yeah. well because they tried mining vibranium in the ocean, but they didn't know they was in Talo Khan territory. But meanwhile, on the ship, Rose spots a bunch of no more sirens, and they start singing. And as they're singing, every soldier starts jumping off the ship, falling to their death. Meanwhile, downstairs, like a ditty party, it's straight dying of all the things going on down here because they spot something swim across out the corner of their eye, and clearly they have that Stevie Wonder level awareness. Yes. She starts realizing that the guy she came down there with is gone. But what she didn't know was that she was next. And she starts panicking and she gets snatched up too. And the two in the control panel shook, deciding to get the hell up out of there. Realizing they're using a sonic attack and controlling their people with sound. It's that type of shit that will give Helen Keller an evolutionary advantage. Damn. After they make way up to the helicopter, he shoots snapping the guy out of his trance. But like playing an elimination game, it was useless. Because Atuma jumps in the air and snipes his ass right in the chest. Got him hanging on a wall like a damn coat rack. They are here protecting their natural resources like Rodway be protecting his food. Damn. Stiff arm and bitches and Popeyes. It's not that serious. And <laughs> she says, fuck him and tries getting up out there next. But they all chasing her down. This is a scary sight. A bunch of blue because with spirits chasing me. I'm committing Hannah Baker acts right there. She starts blicking back though. Catches three bodies in one day. She thinks she Kim K and injures <laughs> one. Hopping in a plane screaming at bro to leave. And clearly he has some forest gum tendencies because I would have left her there. They Chasing you, not me. The bro that was shrugging off bullets earlier like they were nothing runs up and rips off the plane door and she unloads the flipping, bro. And at this point, a random human just all five of his soldiers with ease. If word get back to Talo Khan that he can't protect them, they gonna be like, You supposed to be in charge. You supposed to be the leader. Leave us to some practice then. And after shaking off no more soldiers like a bag of skills, they get away. Or so you would think. Cause all of a sudden, they get pulled back and the morning the sky spinning these niggas around like he finna throw a discus. Yeah. This nasty work and launches them straight at the ground, yep. killing them instantly. This nigga yep. is crazy. You fucked up. <laughs> After this, the queen tries to force Shuri to mourn the loss of her brother, but she isn't having it. I sit and think about my brother for too long. Don't be these clothes. Bill, what did we do? Killmonger colonized her country, destroyed the heart shaped earth, which in turn killed her brother. Hey, fuck that nigga. And the war was in the water, rubbing his hands like Birdman, waiting for her to say something like this. And flies up out the water, and she was just like, Who are you? And how did you get up in here? <laughs> and explains to her that because T'Challa exposed vibranium to the world, that he compromised Talo Khan, since vibranium exists there too, and tells them to capture the scientists and bring them to him. And if they don't prepare for that family meet and greet, and then he just leaves. Not <laughs> even a day after the death of T'Challa, and they get impressed by an Avengers level threat. After he basically threatens to nuke them off the map if they didn't go along with his plan, they find that the girl who built the machine is just a 19 year old college student who built it as a fuck you to her <laughs> professor. This is the problem with the human race. Niggas just be out here making shit. The Indominus Rex, Cobra and the Apes, Raw Wave. They be out here doing anything but furthering the human race. So we cut it. Bro, these Raw Wave jokes are crazy. Every recap I see from Casper, he always jokes about Raw Wave. It's crazy. 
<laughs> it's hilarious. And also, anybody excited for a new Iron Heart series coming out soon? Girl found where she's taking him because she has the design for the minor machine in a garage. And the feds pull up on my fellow non-swimmers, but they wasn't prepared for what was about to happen. Because Riri has an entire Iron Man suit blasting him away and flying away. While Shuri and Okoye bald ass break out of the garage. And this whole scene reminded me of the scene in Taxi when Queen Latifah went from neon size to queso in seconds. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that movie with um Queen Tifa and Jim Fat Jimmy Fallon. That was an old movie too. Furry is not a part of the Sea Boys. They get to a roadblock, but Riri comes in with the assist, blowing a shit up, clearing a path out the road. But this is where things start moving like Zaya Wade and changes <laughs> because they grapple onto Riri and slams her ass down on the concrete. And as Shuri and Okoye bald ass get close, <laughs> they throw a hydro bomb, making them both flip over. And this entire time, I was just thinking, damn, y'all asked them to bring her back to no more. Bro, really said, stupid. I'm not gonna let you get the chance. Okoye on that type of time too, because as they trying to grab for her in, she cuts the rope. So these niggas proceed to jump off a damn whale and land, hitting her with the aura pose. And a two men in the back like sit back and take notes and rise in on a gray whale and jumps off and peep the aura pose too. And a quay in the back having the same reaction as me, realizing that these life-size smurfs are serious smurfs. The police are up and the more just starts violating them. I can't even see for real cause a Koye bald ass, but that King Neptune type right here is blinding me. But it's safe to say she's back there making them regret becoming a police officer and the more soldiers starts running in these brave soldiers they fight in a losing battle i know they can't see shit right now which is why okoye starts winning throwing bro away spear to the face and knocks her fed down she parries bro hey not hey can't, gotta admit okoye say looks good as hell though she looks good as hell Slices him in the stomach, got him kneeling like he bound into a new king, and then bro rushes in and gets put down quick. We eat into an overhead, gonna have her looking like young boy straight dancing her shit. And then she peeps bro in the back running up again, knocking his spear away and impaling him with the spear, and just throws him onto the ground. And she turns around to see that Atuma just walking down Riri. Bro wasted no time, he was about to off her on spot, knocking his spear down and giving him a slash to the face, instantly calling ISO. He tells his people in the back to quit faking, gave her that here nigga damn ass win. And Tells them to go help no more. And I'm just like, help her do what? They yes. already gone. As he starts running the ones with a boy, showing her that she ain't getting no parlays like her snow bunny loving husband. This is a grown man strength. Putting some elbow grease on that hoe and knocking her down with one blow. And then kicking her weapon towards her. I'm not fighting nobody that just gave me my weapon back. This is not a person who is fighting yes. the head. Hitting her with that. Yeah, bro, you need a bat. Okoye yes. starts fighting dirty though. And he ain't having it. Starts moving like Chris Brown. Hitting her with a right. Slams his spear in the ground and rams her into it. Her out like a mattress. And yeah. goddamn, no more out here recruiting a league of assassins and it shows because he goes to finish her off, but she shocks him. Getting up, but they class weapons sending her flying back. And the Mora comes in with the finisher though. Throwing up a hydro bomb at a tumor and he booty bumps it. <laughs> Bro could have kicked it or something. As a Koye cuts it and it blows up in her face, throwing her in the water. She's definitely cooked. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, above, Shuri is telling them to take her back to Namor and to spare the girl and Okoye. So they take her to him. And to my surprise, Okoye. Okoye survives. Water is to black people like Salas are to Hazel. After this, Okoye gets stripped of her title as general of the Dora Malaje, so she goes to recruit Nakia. Why? I do not know. She was trying to set her grandson up to become an orphan. We skip the Taliban when Namor is telling the story of how he became the first mutant. I'm crying. He think he's soldier boy. I'm the first nigga to do all type of shit. His mother and her village were plagued with the smallpox. Magic Johnson was at the cookout telling them how he put his blood, sweat, and tears in the food, so now they're dying. And because this was due Dennis BC, they turned to talk the god of rain and abundance as he led their shaman to a plant sprouting from a blue rock. And because Namora's mother was pregnant, she refused to take the plant for fear of what it would do to him. And she was right. So the shaman started moving like a Minecraft YouTuber, looking at her with the plant by telling her that Namora was dying. And this is where things changed for them. Because of the plant, they couldn't breathe anymore and migrated to the water. And after the death of Namora's mother, she asked him to take her back to the surface to be buried. But when he returned, he saw nothing but despicable acts. And after this, he decided they had to go, burning and killing off everyone there. But after Namor buried his mother and left, a Spanish man cursed him, calling him the child without love. So he killed him, and there he took his name, Namor, because he has no love for the surface world. We cut the idea and she sneaks into Talokan. Meanwhile, the queen summons no more to ask him to bring Suri home. But this is all just a fake out. She asks him, what can I offer you in exchange for my daughter? 
Nothing. Bro really smiling in her face. This is sick work. And she threatens to tell the world about the existence of Namor and Falo Khan. And this is where that demon starts coming out. Cause he gets all up in her face and he's like, if you tell the Americans or if I see so much as a Wakanda ship in the water, I will off you your daughter and wipe Wakanda off the face of the map. And right there she should have been like, my fault, OG. But foolishly she still goes along with her plan. It's clear to me that the queen has some forest Gump tendencies. Because we cut back to Falo Khan and Akia shoots one of the worst people, so the other takes Shuri as a hostage. She tells Shuri to move out the way and snipes her, and Shuri be the only one with the working brain, realizing that this girl is gonna die, and that this will start a war. But Nakia and Riri are like, we do not care! <laughs> exactly. her and going back to the surface as she gets reunited with her mother, but that won't last long, because yeah. meanwhile Namor goes back home and asks her what happened. She started telling like, <laughs> As she used her last few breaths to tell him that it was the Wakandans. And every king needs their D1 first ballot Hall of Fame instigator. Cause no more are behind him like this. how you might kill your motherfucking ass. We can go outside, my nigga. I'm gonna fuck you. So he returns in front of his people, apologizing for trusting them. And this part really grinded my gears. After all the shit you did, you mad at them for betraying you? This is like trusting Rohan Murphy for some elite running advice. <laughs> this just doesn't make sense. And then he declares war. So while Okoye and Nakia talking about how she's becoming more and more relatable to Steve Harvey by the minute, they turn around and see that water flowing oh, down the streets of Wakanda. And I know y'all thought I was gonna make a joke about Africa's not having any water. And these niggas ain't seen this much water before. As it breaks through the wall and eventually all of Wakanda is covered in water. And the more starts showing that he really wants them dead to keep them from having medical help. The sirens come through, controlling all of them, making the Wakandas fall in the water next. And crying, the more really strategic. He had a backup plan for his allies. This nigga think he Batman. Oh, cool. Excuse me, y'all, y'all. Excuse me, y'all. I just got up about 30 minutes ago. I'm trying to recover, y'all. <laughs> Name, boy, wonder. Nigga, weakness is a green rock. Use that against him, come with his ass. Contingency, file code name, same color as my shirt. Take some of sexy red's breath, put it in a canister, and watch his skin combust. Contingency, file code name, police brutality victim. Ask nobody to lie on him. The police will do the rest of the work. Contingency, file code name, the rock. Give her a hard and strenuous acting role. A flash, spark on the side, and finally green arrow. That nigga can't box, just whoop his ass. Under the door, Malachi throw a bomb, shutting him down. Like, damn, I didn't think they think it was that bad. And we cut to Namor pulling up to the island. And I remember everybody was complaining that my son was fat. Meanwhile, they got the use of seven and Roger dude. Bench players talking like starters. I hate it. And Baku tries to sneak up on him, though. Hits him with the staff, but Namor just flexes, turning around and looking at him like, This nigga trash. Spins around and one shots him in. Oh, shit. Sending him Damn. flying into a bar. Got my son on the ground wheezing like Ashton Kutcher around him. Damn. So when the Jada Smith clones come. I did saw something about that too as well. Shooting at them more of his soldiers and they start running. But he's just standing there. At that point, I would have been like, just take the country. You can have it. But no more trying to send a message. Packing their beams away, treating them hoes like nerf bullets. And then starts doing unspeakable acts. Jumping on the air, dodging and weaving all of the beams coming his way. As he's flying straight into the aircraft. And he was just like... Has come. Come. One shot in a plane and then flying up and looking for more enemies. There is seriously something wrong with bro. And that's when he spots straight free eats. Dodging a beast, jumping off the other plane, going down and then flying up, cutting a wing wall. It then slices off the other wing while falling down. And while they're falling out the sky, he flies down and then throws them at the other plane. So Io flies in straight at Namor. You didn't just see he wiped out two dragon fires with ease. There isn't a single thought behind that big ass head. Shooting at him, but he literally Slapping away Sonic attacks like they're nothing. And he decides to turn it up a notch, moving like Goku, hitting her with a left and right twice, and then flying in and slicing the wing off this flying saucer. Broadway wave just got excited somewhere because I said sauce and wing in the same sentence. As she crash lands in and that fight quickly, he jumps down and spots Shuri in the distance flying in. So she starts shooting at him, turning full on Stormtrooper right in front of our eyes because she can't hit shit, allowing him to jump on the water and start capping that low ground like Harry or Tubman. And while he's swimming away, Shuri is still trying to shoot at him, so he stops and waits on the perfect chance to send her to that T'Chaka and T'Challa meeting room. Jumping up, hitting a whole ass flip, and landing on their jet, stabbing the center console and looking Shuri deep in her eyes as she's looking up shook. She ain't never seen no matchup like this. This is like dropping Steph in the 50s. They gonna be like, Hang that nigga! 
nigga, I got the rope right here. And because he's done irreparable damage to the aircraft, that shit starts spinning out, crashing into the water, and he's thinking it's GG's because they ain't boogie right now. After the mother got done wiping his hands with Shuri, he pulls up to the Citadel next to go drop off her mom, making a small ass crack in the window, and after this, bro starts smiling, so y'all know he's about to do some vile shit, yep. as he just leaves. The queen tells Riri to run away, but it's too late, because he comes back with eight hydro bombs and throws them shits at the window, breaking the glass and completely destroying the Citadel, leading to them both getting swallowed up by the water. They abusing the hell out of this move, do this against somebody who can swim. Eventually, the queen wakes up and swims down to save Ruri, who is floating straight down. But as she's going up, the evolutionary advantage water has on black people is too strong. Because when the Kia and the Koye walk in, the first thing they see is the queen face down in the water. They try resuscitation on her, but it isn't working. And meanwhile, the entire time, the Moor is in the back talking his shit, saying that he'll return in a week's time, and that if they don't join him, he'll wash Wakanda off the face of the earth. This is like when she keep draining all of Jersey. What did I do? I just live here. Shuri walks in and sees that her mother got the Tupac meet and greet and on top of killing her mother he starts adding to the pain. And literally points right at her and says, You are queen now. And just flies away, leaving and jumping in the water. After the queen Oh, two things I gotta talk about. One, I hate they killed off. I hate that they killed Queen Ramonda off. And two, Angela Bassett played um Notorious BRG's mom in the biopic. With um, Andy Mackie playing Tupac, I know y'all you want to talk about, right? Queen's funeral, Shuri uses the bracelet that Namor gave her to try and create a synthetic heart-shaped herb. Nigga done gave his ops the tool to kill him. This is like Kendrick Lamar putting a kid in front of Drake like, Hey kid, how old are you? I'm 12. And unsurprisingly, it works. Meanwhile, all of this is happening, they figure out Namor's weakness. That if they draw him out like SpongeBob in that one episode, they can kill him. And that's when it happens. Shuri takes the heart shaped herb and goes into the ancestral plane. And y'all probably thinking, oh, she finna see T'Challa, maybe her father. But nah, because she swims up and looks around, calling out for her brother, but he isn't the one that's there. Because as the camera pans, we see it's none other than a backdoor demon. Yeah, kill him. And she's just standing there like, this can't be. <laughs> this ain't me. And she says that she would never choose him. But she's in denial harder than KD after a haircut. Nothing changed. Bro just took a step back. So he starts pressing her. Asking her why did she take it? And she says, so I can be strong. So he says, strong to do what? But she can't admit it. Trying to flip it on him by telling him that the blood of her family is on his hands. And he simply like, nah, and starts cooking her. Telling her that her mother saved a young girl from the lost tribe. But her father, he would have killed her. I mean, he did kill his brother. And after he finished giving that a Immaculate ass speech, he was like, You wanna be noble like Tatala or stand on business like me? And then she woke up. Nakia asked her, Who did she see? And she straight up started lying to her and says, No one. I'm crying, bitch, thinks she's Zoro. And that shit's feeling more and more relatable to Batman because her family abandoned her. She punches the statue. And here we see that the heart shaped her worked. We fast forward to the meeting. He had the higher up shook, told the Wakandans to evacuate the city immediately. And then Baku and everybody else looks up and sees a jet. And that's when she Shuri drops out, flying all the way down doing a clean superhero landing as everybody around realizes that the Black Panther is back. But in every great moment, there's always somebody to hate. And yeah. Michael and Shuri arm wrestle to test her strength and bro realize, damn, she on that shit. Raising her hand up as all the elders finally acknowledge her. After this, they plan to take out no more. And because Shuri got hopped up by Killmonger, she says that her mother is gone and all she wants to do is kill him. And tells Mbaku he's going to help her get it, leading up to the final battle. The get back. We cut to the Atlantic Ocean and the Wakandans done gave these niggas an evolutionary advantage over them. When you go to the pool, is your life or black? But this was all a part of their plan. Because they used the mining device to draw them out, he becomes more and more unrelatable to Alan Keller because the sound got them all tweaking. He tells them to swim up and go cheese that height advantage. And when they reach the surface, they look up and see the Wakandans got an entire stealth ship. These niggas' technology is insane. I see why Killmonger greased the entire country for it. Shuri and the Wakanda fleet are all on board chanting. Meanwhile, above no more people, dragon fighters come out the sky shooting at the Talo Kaniu. But as they all go into the water, no more just simply does not care. Flying into the air, jumping on top of it, and slicing that hole in half like butter. Bro running around building up a veto level kill streak right now. He is a threat. And this shows cause he sees Ironheart is in front of him and bro actually gonna stop. What is she gonna do? Drown him? And she says this is for the queen. He rushes in trying to shoot him but missing every shot and see this is why Shuri was like <laughs> 
You ain't gonna get these back. At the end of the movie, we trying to avenge the queen, not embarrass her. And the more starts targeting a flyer, using his spear to split the side of it and then grabs the bat, throwing it at a ship full of Wakandans, clearing at least a quarter of them out in a second. And now they realize that all that blazing and Baku was doing, calling the more as strong as the Hulk, that he was right. And while Shuri is down there wiping out all the NPC Talo Kanil, Ironheart is on high ground in hell, shooting at the more, but he's dodging everything. It got so bad to the point he turned around mid fight just to see the action that was going on down there. And look at this. He turns back around, one shot in her, making her fall all the way down, but she catches herself. Black Widow can't relate, and Ironheart catches back up, but they simply just cannot touch this man as he keeps flying higher and higher. But unlike the queen, he's too high up, and that's when Ironheart comes from behind for the sneak, shooting him in the back as he falls and lands inside the jet. Ironheart tells Black Panther it's go time, so she jumps on the jet, going inside, and he's like, princess. And she's like, nah, I'm the Black Panther, I'm here for revenge. And he's just looking at her like, but anyway. And so Shuri's AI says, evaporation complete. And that was the plan, to turn my son into a Popeye's biscuit. But she thought he was just gonna stand there and take it. Bro starts spazzing out, stabbing the thrusters repeatedly to get him the hell up out of there. And Shuri talking to her AI, asking him, what is he doing? She didn't even get the chance to give her, I'm a bad guy now speech. So she tells her AI to get her to the desert. She don't want this man to grasp a drop of water, so she decides to put a stop to his run. Kicking him in the back, got him pressed up against the wall like he's getting arrested. So he turns around, goes for a left, we, we eat this right, and then she scratches his face, but he's like, catches her elbow and gives her a life altering rib shot, turning her into an inflatable man outside a car dealership. And while he has her in the Disney Channel knees, lifts her hand up, her in the Black Lives Matter, but she cuts his arm and he starts moving like Bruce Lee, hit her with a one inch punch across the room, and he immediately turns around and breaks apart the jet, crash landing onto the desert, and you just know bro is mad as hell a little bit earlier and he would have been back to 100%. Shuri gets up looking around for Namor, but she looks up to a demon, punching her right in her shit, and then she turns around and bro wasted no time running in, picking her up and flying in the air, and while he's taking the hits, grabs her elbow again, punching her and rocking her arms and legs, and proceeds to fly straight down, hitting her with a flying lariat, and god damn, is this not overkill? It's her first day as Black Panther and she gotta fight this right. demon. He stands over her and hits her with a two-piece and goes to stomp her out, but she rolls out the way and sees Free Eats and cuts off his wing. Got bro screaming out, so she grabs him, flips him over on his face, and bro looking down like, Is this nigga serious? And then the camera pans, and she holding his wing up like a damn trophy, so he cannot let this slide. Going for a right, but Shuri dodges in the cleanest way. He catches her arm, hits her with a left, and then shoulder takes her at a rock. Out to have her in that tight end walk by the end of the night. He flies in and elbows her in the chest and starts wailing on her. So she grabs him and starts moving like a freak, putting the claws in his back, letting off a big boom, and used his arm as a trampoline, jumping off and kicking him down, sending him flying. And while he's taking a knee, she hits him with a spinning back kick, laying him out face first. Losing to a rookie you have 400 plus years on is crazy. All NBA rookies taking notes right now. <laughs> Drop kicks him, pulls in, and whips the claws out. And now she has him right where she wants him and starts walking him down. And with the fear of getting the prince of all two and a half Saiyans treatment, he decided to lock in. Stabbing her with his spear and pressing her against the rock and told her, Killmonger said, You did want to be like him as he just walked into the water. And the words Shuri said to Killmonger starts replaying in her head, realizing she got to stand on business, breaking the spear and pushing herself off of it. And right before Namor can reach the water, she runs and jumps over him and looks him deep in his eyes. Eyes, and she's like, well, kind of forever, burning his entire body while she's just sitting in the back posing. He falls over and she walks over to him, flips him over, and is about to finish him off. After she got the talk no juice from her mother, she tells him to yield, so he does. Getting what he wanted in the first place, to become allies with Wakanda. Yeah, okay, that's how it ends. But yeah. It was a badass fight. Yeah, maybe it was a pretty badass fight, but overall now, yeah. That was a W recap, guys, or a W recap. Keep up great work these, man. Keep up great work. But yeah, I, I actually enjoyed uh, Panther Card Forever. I actually enjoyed it. I actually pretty much enjoyed it. But anywho, Paul Squad, that is my conclusion of my Hulkbanger recap reaction to Casper's Black Panther Card Forever recap. So if you enjoyed this, please hit that button. Read means a lot to me. Comment your share your thoughts. Have you seen what Con Forever? What's your thoughts about it? And do you love it? Do you hate it? And... Overall, yeah, that we recap Castle here with great great with So Hot Squad, please stay tuned because I have another Hot Banger recap I wanted to get through. And it just Jai Juice is the Wolverine recap. So Hot Squad, please stay tuned for that.